This week on Quadriga, Germany and the migrants hate or help. Arson attacks on refugee shelters. Neo-Nazi riots. Right-wing extremists spreading fear and whole families who turn out to applaud anti-foreigner protests. What are politicians doing to counter this? Chancellor Angela Merkel has finally taken charge and made clear statements condemning the agitators and praising those who extend a helping hand. Prosperous Germany is seen as a land of hope and opportunity. But where has this anger and violence against those seeking refuge come from? Has this xenophobia been bubbling under the surface for some time? Coming to you from Berlin, Quadriga, the international debate. Your host this week, Peter Craven. Yes, hello and a very warm welcome indeed to Quadriga coming to you from the heart of the German capital, Berlin. And the question we're going to be discussing today is Germany and the migrants hate or help? And to do so, I'm joined here in the studio by three uh, seasoned commentators and analysts. And without any further ado, I'd like to introduce them to you. Beginning with Stefan Buchen. He's a specialist on the Middle East, North Africa and much else besides, who's an investigative journalist on the high-profile Panorama programme here on German TV. Stefan says there is among the German people a nebulous majority that falls somewhere between hate and help. The question is, what do these people think? It's great, too, to welcome back Alan Posner, the Anglo-German writer and journalist who's a regular commentator for the Berlin-based daily Die Welt. Right-wing extremists don't have any solution, says Alan. They just whip up animosity towards the government. And another familiar face on Quadriga is Ursula Weidenfeld who's worked for a whole range of Germany's most prestigious business publications as editor, author and prize-winning commentator. Ursula says most Germans are neither racist nor hostile to foreigners. We can't allow extremists to set the tone. But before I begin, uh, or before we begin that debate, uh, I would just like to uh, invite my guest today to uh, comment on images that have been going around the world Shocking images, you're uh, nodding, Stefan. This is, uh, just to give you an idea, this is Germany's mass uh, circulation built newspaper, one of the major dailies here in Germany. Uh, normally not very inhibited about what they have on their front cover, but uh, in this edition, uh, the human touch, really, I think it's fair to say, uh, via Trauen, we are mourning, and then they recommend that you go to the back page of the newspaper and what you can then see there, and do look away if you, uh, if you uh, so choose. This is... Uh, an image of a three-year-old boy who's been washed up on the coast of Turkey, trying to make it to Europe. His five-year-old brother was also died or died in the same way, and apparently ten other adults. Um, it's certainly very, very troubling stuff. Ursula, what do you make of it? Well, I think it is very impressive. It is um, just seeing pictures as something completely different than knowing that thousands and thousands of people died in the, by, by, by crossing the... Um, the, 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 the sea. Uh, before you have the picture, it becomes personal. You can't, um, um, t you, you can't defend your distance to, to, um, to the discussion. And that is, I think, the, um, um, the, the boulevard papers do that. They print the pictures, they make you being touched, being um, involved suddenly in, in, in the discussion. And probably that is the good thing, of, of the, the good side. The bad side is probably that um, it is only if you see children dying that uh, people are involved, that people uh, be become touched. Mm. I can't see anything positive about this uh, editorial policy to publish this picture. If this proves something, it, it, it proves um, the, the hesitation of the media and uh, them being asleep for at least four years because the war in Syria has been going on for four years and uh, maybe uh, Western media, maybe the German media, maybe the Bild Zeitung, um, they uh, were shutting their eyes uh, upon what was going on. I mean, this picture happened to be popularized, but these stories have been going on for four years now and nobody virtually cared about it. So, uh, in my view, this is the, th the sad side about it. Sometimes you, you need a picture that becomes yeah, but, iconic but, but, for But how, for, uh, for how after four years? I mean, that tells an, a different story mm -hmm. about Europe, about Germany and about the West. 
if your editor in chief had come to you, Alan, and said, Alan, shall we shall we print the photos or not? What would you have said? I would have said not, for that reason. One reason. I mean, uh, uh, we've we've seen children torn apart by. Mr. Assad's bombs uh, in, in, in Aleppo, we've seen, uh, and, and, and uh, pictures weren't published, and we've seen, well, everything you said is true. I also think that, you know, the idea that possibly the parents of this child could see the photo in the paper must be deeply disturbing. If it was my grandson, uh, uh, I, would, I, I wouldn't want it to be printed. But having said that, you might need to read the, the text, too, and the text says, among other things, we need to ask ourselves, who are we? What are our values? And this is interesting because there are nativists out there. There are people who are saying too many um, uh, foreign people coming in, refugees and so on, they're going to dilute our German essence, if you will. We're going to lose our culture. And Bild Zeitung, the most influential newspaper in the country, is now saying, who are we? What are our values? That we are our values. That is, we stay true to ourselves, not by resisting immigration, but by staying true to our values. Say what you will. I've agreed with everything you said, but that is a good sentence and something that uh, needed to be said. Mm. Well, Stefan. We should, yeah, I think we shouldn't dedicate the discussion to the build side. Um, uh, no, we can uh, talk about panorama <laughs> and, uh, and <laughs> if you like. <laughs> we can talk about, about German t state TV. We can talk about their um, playing but, but, down of all sorts but, of crises, but everyone, can't every, we? Yeah. Every one of them would print, uh, would print the picture or would quote the picture in the next, in the next days or weeks. You can, uh, uh, some pictures are too strong and they are too impressive than too don't, do not print them, then to do not publish them. Even Panorama would do that. Beca because you need, sometimes you need a picture to become iconic for Excuse a conflict. Me. Panorama, for, Panorama uh, talked sorry. about this, this, <laughs> the Syrian refugee crisis three years ago. We were the first, the well, first you are the in, best, German course, media, in German media okay. to talk about it. <clears throat> I've got, so, I've, I've, the, <laughs> this is the difference we are talking about. The German government was taken by surprise as if there had not been a war in the Middle East for four years, and mm -hmm. now they're completely unprepared to and overwhelmed by this crisis. So if they had paid more attention to it, mm -hmm. maybe there would be more places for people to, to live. There won't be camps all over Germany. One thing we do know, <laughs> totally and one thing we can agree on, I think, I think I, uh, is that uh, many of the people you are talking about who are fleeing Syria and elsewhere, they're making their way to Germany. Let's have a look at some footage from just a couple of days ago of what these people were saying. <laughs> I think you can hear that loud and clear. People saying they want to come to Germany, Germany, they are chanting. They're at Budapest railway station. They haven't been allowed, many of them, to proceed to Germany. Some have, and those people who have, have arrived at, many of them, at Munich Central Railway Station in, the, in Bavaria, in the south of Germany, where people have gathered to greet the migrants. A lot of genuine, heartfelt sympathy there. A lot of support for people on the move. Reflecting that mood, Stefan, a lot of the people are coming to Germany, as I said, and Angela Merkel, mm. she's engaged in the debate this week, and she came out and she said, Germany is a land of hope and opportunity. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. Uh, I mean, uh, these are moving pictures. I, I mean, uh, we, we, we should uh, dedicate some time to, <laughs> to, the comment, uh, to commenting these um, pictures because it's not only at the railway station of Budapest, it's also at the Munich railway station where people come uh, get, o get off uh, uh, trains and uh, they're chanting and uh, showing their joy. Uh, to arrive in Germany. So uh, it seems to be a country of hope. And uh, uh, the chancellor uh, added a very important sentence. Uh, uh, she said in her uh, press conference a few days ago that that had not always been the case. Uh, yeah. And this is very important to mm -hmm. note. And um, we have to think about the railway station of Bud Budapest. What happened there 72 or 73 years ago, uh, the direction was uh, to somewhere else then. Hmm? And um, this is a uh, quite unbelievable uh, development. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, okay, I, so make, I, I clearly make the connection here. And this is something that Germany now should be proud of. 
Okay, so Germany should be proud of that, Alan. But is Germany, a, for, for you, a country in, this, in the current crisis, if that's what we want to call it, is Germany a country of hope and opportunity or a country of anger and violence? Well, both. I mean, obviously, the pictures have shown that we've all seen um, the violent attacks on, 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 uh, on, on refugees and their homes and so on. But I think the majority of Germans, the vast majority, actually, and this is a difference between Germany and almost any other country in Europe, which we should be proud of, have somehow decided they're going to welcome these people for whatever reason. And you can question those reasons. You can also ask, how long is this going to stay that way when the real work begins? But the idea that there is something like a German dream, that we are, that, you know, that people of all shapes and sizes and colors want to come here, somehow as the majority of Germans seem to have sort of, it's in made click and they seem to say, well, that's a good thing. And, and uh, it's not just, you know, the German summer dream w w during the football world championship. It's, 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 it's a real, uh, something really attractive. I, I hope it stays that way. You implied there might be a limit to it, that there, there might be a ceiling to that goodwill, because it, it was only a couple of weeks ago that Chancellor Merkel talked about 400,000 people coming to Germany. We all nodded, we all said, well, that's a grave challenge for the country, without a doubt. And, now, and then suddenly the figure jumped to 600,000, now we're at 800,000. Credible figures are suddenly saying possibly a million by the end of the year. Is there going to be a, a, a cut-off point, Ursula, where people are going to say, this is too many? I, I, I meet lots of Germans who are saying already to me, I feel anxious about the, the, the sheer numbers. Do well, you feel anxious? No, I don't feel anxious. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think that, um, uh, that on, on, the one hand, on the one hand, people have a very clear feeling that this is a European thing to, to solve and, and, and a European thing to just negotiate. And, and, and Germans who <laughs> welcome refugees for the first days or the first weeks, expect Europe to, um, to to do something like burden sharing in the upcoming month. And I think that this will be very important for um, the, um, uh, the the resilience of this German feeling of welcoming people who are oppressed, who are threatened in their home countries, who have to 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 um, to, to 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 leave their home countries in order to save their lives. I think this is. Um, it, it, there is a very clear expectation that there should be something like a European um, thing to, to, for burden sharing, for just uh, finding a um, mechanism or whatever. If, if, there are, uh, if, if people are continuing to come to Europe, if they stay for years and years, and nobody can expect them to go back in the next year or two years, if, if the situation in the Near East is um, not, not so that everybody would go back then. But what about the people inside Germany who do say that they feel very concerned, very anxious about the numbers, and that they're concerned that maybe a million people will come this year, maybe a million people will come next year? Yeah, but, and, and this is a problem, and this is a problem uh, for Germany. The main problem is uh, on the side on the, of the refugees. Nobody goes, leaves this country um, for fun or for, for, for whatever. They, they, they have to fear for their lives, and therefore they are coming. And Germany has a duty, even, uh, even every other European country has a duty to, um, to, to welcome them, to, to give them shelter, to do something... Uh, that they can stay for the time they are suppressed in their home countries. On the other hand, it's easy for us to talk about it. We can sort of wear our hearts on our sleeves and, and, and sort of say, welcome, because it's not, you know, it's not our jobs, it's not our lives uh, that, that, will, that are affected. If, but if you're a teacher, if you're a social worker, if you're a policeman, um, if you're someone living in a village uh, um, where suddenly half the population is foreign born and you've never had to do with them and you have to cope with things like they have different ideas of tidiness, they have different ideas of when night begins and morning stops and so on. Um, they are culturally different. If you're these kind of people, you're going to have you're going to have problems. And the question is, what can politics do? What are politicians doing to help these people? You know, the the teacher who has a class of twenty five in Germany already seventy five percent are are from are with a migrant background, and suddenly five more come in who are traumatized by their experience, don't speak a word of German, and may very well you know finally tip the, the you know the balance against the teacher who then gets it in the neck from everyone from the parents, from the other children, from her superiors yeah, and multiply that by ten thousand you've got the real problem.
I do. I know you've given this an awful lot of thought, and I know you've broadcast on areas like this, and I'm very interested in what you're... My question is, is, is what Alan has just said a good explanation for why there is so much far-right sentiment in Germany? Or are there other explanations? Oh, I, I, I think Alan didn't refer to far-right uh, extremism. No. No. Um, he... He, he was uh, talking about the concerns of what we call die Mitte der Gesellschaft, uh, the people. center of uh, mm -hmm. society. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and um, here's the big question. Uh, I think people don't count the number of refugees and they say, okay, um, unless they uh, are more than 800,000, I will be happy and I will be welcoming, but above 800,000, I will be against. No, that's not the way pe people think. Um, people are ambiguous. There's a lot of ambivalence. On, on the one hand, people have a lot of understanding for Syrians who leave their country because now pictures of a, a war-torn country are well known. Everybody knows what is going on. So people show and have in their hearts a lot of understanding. On the other hand, people have concerns about their jobs, about competition, about, you know, um, <clears throat> the, uh, the apartment, the house market uh, in, in, in major German cities is getting more and more similar to the London house market. So weak parts of the society, in German society, they uh, fear about competition. Uh, um, they, 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 they will face uh, with growing numbers of migrants. So the government that? has to address these concerns, of course, of course. And uh, there will be a lot of, there has to be a lot of investment into integration, education of these people. And the German government late, but finally starts to understand that. Mm -hmm. they, they want to send people into those refugee camps and in, in those tent camps now to see what are the qualifications and, and um, of, of of refugees. At the beginning of his um, mandate, the German interior minister said that refugees and migration are two different things. That showed that he didn't understand anything about what was going on in the world. So refugees now, and migrations are two different no, no, things. And no. if you begin to mix them up, you, you, you get lost. You have to, uh, you have to discuss the refugee dis uh, uh, question, uh, at the moment, they are coming, thousands of, and, and thousands of them are coming, um, and you have to discuss that at, as, as, as a question of human rights, of asylum, of course, of, uh, and not of immigration, and not of um, uh, integration in the labor market, and not of uh, uh, um, uh, in, in all the questions and all the points which, which would be solved by an immigration law. I agree with you, we, we do need something like an immigration law, but not at this, but, but if you mix both questions, um, you, you, you won't, you won't you, solve you have either to the mix one or them, the other. You have to mix them on a practical level. You, 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 we, we face a reality where we have 800,000 refugees, so of course it's in the best interest of the country that these people will be educated and take part in the labour market. OK, we're going to get right back to the main thing. The main question we're asking is Germany uh, help or hate? And uh, certainly the German president, Joachim Gauck, he came out with a very interesting comment on this. He said that he, he made a distinction be between what he called a bright Germany, full of light, and a dark Germany. Let's have a quick look at the dark Germany before we continue the discussion. The dark side of Germany, young right-wing extremists protesting against the presence of migrants in the country. The extremists are few in number, but very violent. For a long time, German politicians said nothing. But now, they're taking a stand. We cannot yield a millimeter to the extreme right. Where I come from, we'd say they're a mob. These people have nothing to do with Germany. But is that really the case? Or is the far right articulating hostility that is shared by many disgruntled German citizens? Chancellor Angela Merkel refused to engage with such citizens on her recent visit to Heidenau. These people aren't openly violent, but they are afraid of migration to an extent approaching xenophobia. Should such people be ignored or should the majority of Germans listen to them and try to understand their concerns? Those are indeed very important questions, Alan Posner. Uh, Sigmar Gabriel there, the Vice Chancellor of Germany, describing these far right people as, as a mob, a pack. He called them. Yeah. Do you sympathise with that? 
Yes, I do. I think you have to call a spade a spade and you have to call a mob a mob. And um, if the mob manages to mob mobilise <laughs> uh, more people, then they still remain a mob. Um, and I think it's disgusting, quite frankly, disgraceful, if you're against immigration, which is legitimate or against these numbers, to demonstrate in front of the place where the where these people are, in front of these, uh, uh, these refugee homes and so on, these are the weakest link in the chain. These people, it's not their fault they're there. If you must demonstrate, go to Berlin, demonstrate against the government, go to where the, where the government is, but don't, you know, take it out on these, on these people. And one thing you have to say is that maybe there are obviously legitimate concerns of, I've, 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 I've just talked about them, but these right-wing people, they don't give a damn about these, these concerns. They'll take anything <clears throat> They can, be it the Euro, be it the European Union bureaucracy, be it I don't know what, be it a teaching about homosexuality in schools, and they'll use it as grist to their mill, which is about destroying open society. So are, don't, you know, I mean... Are they a mob or are they an East German mob? They are... <laughs> They are very definitely, uh, they feel more at home in East Germany, they recruit better in East Germany. They are a product, product of the communist dictatorship uh, and the closed society they grew up in, uh, where there was no discussion of Germany's Nazi past. There was no self-searching, no soul-searching. They were the better people. They were not, there was no immigration. So they, they, they grew up basically in a, in a red-tinted fascist society. Stefan, what does it tell us about Germany in the late summer of 2015 that we have an East German president, uh, an East German chancellor, East German born chancellor, Angela Merkel, going to East Germany, being booed, being denounced as a traitor by an East German mob, if you so will, in inverted commas? What does that tell us about Germany today? It tells us that Germany is very diverse. And uh, <laughs> I, I think that... Uh, Eastern that was Germany, a very German that, answer. <laughs> that, Germany, that Eastern Germany even is very diverse. And um, I agree that um, certain phenomena, like uh, mothers pushing their children uh, in these chariots mm -hmm. uh, and through the streets following a Nazi mob, this is it's quite a typical East German phenom phenomenon. Uh, uh, you won't find that easily in Western Germany. But we can't deny that there is uh, extremism and violence against refugees in Western Germany as well. Absolutely. I mean, many of, mm. of the attacks that were countered uh, during the last weeks and months happened in Western Germany. So um, we, we have this core of, of, of Nazis in Germany still. It's deeply rooted, as everybody knows. But they're not the majority, of course. It's, it's a small minority. Mm -hmm. And um, I think... Um, what, what is important is how the majority of society who mm -hmm. does not take part either in help or in hatred, yeah. but who are concerned about mm -hmm. this, these numbers of migrants, how will they behave politically in, 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 in the future? Um, and um, this is an open question. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, um, but we um, do have reasons to be optimistic about that. Of course, because yeah. I think that uh, there, in, 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 if you look at the, the early 90s, 1990 years, there is um, um, a, a, a quite different mood to, uh, compared to today. <clears throat> So that was when th hundreds of thousands of people were coming to Germany from the refugees from, coming from the Balkan from, from wars. From the Balkan So those, in that time, there there had been um, um, quite not not a majority, but there there, there was a silent silence in 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 in, 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 in within lots of of citizens who who didn't um, take a position, who were not able to speak out that they. Um, are anxious about something or even welcoming somebody. So I think what, what we have today is, com is quite different from that. We have a majority of Germans who are welcoming. We have a chancellor who is um, very outspoken. We have a vice chancellor who I, I wouldn't have said back to them because I think you, you, you don't, don't have to adapt the speech of, 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 of uh, the far right wingers to, to just make clear that, that, that there is a cut between them and, <coughs> them and you. But I think that uh, Germany has developed a, a lot since then. Um, yeah, there's a general consensus that Germany is an immigration society. And even, and, and even, even the even other European countries Angela see Merkel. that, and even the refugees <laughs> recognize that <laughs> in, in calling we yeah. want to join. This is interesting for, 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 for foreign listeners, because, uh, viewers, because Angela Merkel, 13 years ago, when she was uh, in the opposition, in the parliament, she said that Germany is not a society 
of immigration. Huh? And now she's saying the opposite. Yeah, so come this full shows... circle. Yeah. Ordinary Germans, when the schools, the school gyms are still full and the children are going back to school, when, when there are lots of non-German speaking kids in German classes, when the health insurance premiums go up, ordinary Germans, are they going to lean towards help or hatred? Quickly. Help. I hope so, to help. I'd say help. A positive note to end on. I'm happy about that. I hope we've given you some food for thought, yeah? We've been caught up by the clock. Uh, do join us next week on uh, Quadriga if you've enjoyed the show as much as I have. Until then, bye-bye and tschüss. <laughs>